Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Christina, and in today's video, I will be doing a brief general overview of the three Spanish speaking Caribbean countries being Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. Under one of my recent videos, I had someone request that I do a video comparing Cuban and Dominican culture, but I went ahead and decided to include Puerto Rico in there as well. Now, as you guys know, I am Dominican, therefore my knowledge of Cuban and Puerto Rican history and culture is not as much. So if you are Cuban or Puerto Rican and I happen to miss some details about your history or culture, I apologize in advance. If there's anything that you would like to add, please feel free to do so in the comment section below. And now we will begin with the video. So we're going to begin this video talking about Cuba and we will begin with the history of the island. Now, before the arrival of the Spanish, the island of Cuba was inhabited by three distinct tribes of indigenous peoples, including the Taino, the Guanatabey, and the Sibune people, and the presence dates all the way back to the 4th millennia BC. The Taino are said to have arrived in Cuba from the island of Española sometime around the 3rd century AD. Now, Columbus first arrived in Cuba on October 28, 1492, and had initially named it Isla Juana, after Juan, Prince of Asturias. Under Spanish rule, the native Tainos were forced to work the encomienda system, and within a century, their population was virtually wiped out, due to lack of immunity to diseases and the harsh working conditions. In 1529, a measles outbreak killed two-thirds of the native population. Now, as a colony, Cuba developed rather slowly, and unlike some of the other plantation islands of the Caribbean, had a very diversified agriculture. By the mid-18th century, the colonists held an estimated 50,000 African slaves on the island. However, after the Haitian Revolution of 1804 and Haiti retreating from the global sugar market, this turned the focus to Cuba, and they took the lead as the largest sugar producers. This would, of course, require the labor of hundreds of thousands more African slaves, which would be imported into the island. Between 1790 and 1820, another 325,000 slaves would be imported to Cuba. By 1817, Cuba's population consisted of 291,000 white people, 116,000 free people of color or mixed race people, and 224,000 black slaves. During the 19th century, more than 100,000 Chinese workers would also be brought to the island. Cuba would be the last Spanish territory to abolish slavery in 1886. Cuba would remain under Spanish rule until 1898, when Cuba became a protectorate of the United States and they formally gained their independence from the United States in 1902. Cuba eventually fell under the dictatorship of Fulgencio Batista, who dominated Cuban politics for 25 years. Open corruption and oppression led to his ousting in January 1959 by the 26th of July movement, which would pave the way for Fidel Castro. Fidel and his brother Raul, frustrated with capitalist exploitation, incited the Cubist revolution, and along with Che Guevara overthrew the old Batista regime and set up the communist, Marxist, one-party state that is still in power to this day. The United States attempted to intervene and overthrow the Castro regime, as seen in the Bay of Pigs invasion, but were unsuccessful. This resulted in the United States putting up an embargo, which implemented trade and travel restrictions with Cuba. One of the most notable effects of the embargo are the classic old cars seen all over Cuba. With cars no longer being imported from the United States and imports from Europe being practically impossible, they had no choice but to remain with these old cars. And now we will move on to the Cuban people. So according to the 2012 census, the self-identified race of Cubans was 64.1% white, 27.6% mixed race, including mulatos, mestizos, sambos, and pardos, 9.3% black, and 0.1% Asian. However, some say that there is some discrepancy in reports of the country's racial composition. The Institute of Cuban and Cuban American Studies at the University of Miami determined that 62% of Cubans were black, in contrast to the 2002 census that determined that 65% of the population was white. So I'm not sure about that information. If any of you guys out there are Cuban and you're listening, let me know your thoughts on that. And now onto the fun part, culture. As seen in most Caribbean cultures, Cuban culture is a melting pot of different cultures, most heavily influenced by those of Spain and Africa. 
Cuban music is extremely rich and is the most commonly known expression of Cuban culture. Cuba is home to a multitude of musical genres, including song, danzón, conga, guaracha, mambo, cha-cha-cha, and rumba. Some of the most notable Cuban singers and celebrities include Celia Cruz, Desi Arnaz from I Love Lucy, La Lupe, Gloria Estefan, William Levy, Pitbull, and Juju. Now, when it comes to religion, Cuba is 65% Roman Catholic, 5% Protestant, 23% unaffiliated, and 17% folk religion, including Santeria, which is practiced by many Cubans. Santeria is a system of beliefs that merges aspects of Yoruba religion mixed with Christianity and even some elements of the religions of the indigenous peoples. This emerged during slavery times as the slaves were not allowed to practice their original religions, so they masked their worship of their orishas or divine spiritual beings with those of the Catholic saints, hence making their Catholic owners believe that they were worshiping their saints instead. The official language of Cuba is Spanish, of course, and the second most spoken language is actually Haitian Creole, spoken by the Haitian immigrants and their descendants. There's also Lukumi, a dialect of West African language of the Yoruba people. And now food. Cuban cuisine is a fusion of Spanish and Caribbean cuisines. A typical meal may consist of plantains, black beans and rice, roba vieja or shredded pork, it may also include Cuban bread, pork with onion, moro, which is black beans and rice, and of course, you can't forget the ever so famous Cuban coffee. When it comes to sports, baseball is the most popular, followed by other sports such as boxing, football, basketball, and cricket. Currently, Cubans and Cuban Americans are the third largest Latino group in the United States. The highest concentration of Cubans in the U.S. can be found in Florida, followed by California, New Jersey, Texas, and New York. And now we'll move on to Puerto Rico and we'll start with the history of the island as well. Puerto Rico was originally inhabited by the indigenous Taino people. At the time of Columbus's arrival, there was an estimated 30 to 60,000 Tainos living on the island, which they call Borinquen, which will later be Spanishized to Borinquen, meaning the land of the valiant and noble lord. They lived in small villages, each led by a cacique. Columbus arrived to the island in 1493 and originally named it San Juan Bautista, in honor of John the Baptist. As with Cuba, many of the indigenous population was forced into labor and suffered extreme fatalities from the Europeans' infectious diseases. By 1520, enslaved Africans had begun to be imported to the island. 
Once the gold mines were depleted, Spain began to lose interest in the island colony. But with the expansion of sugar plantations, the slave population increased dramatically. The island would remain under Spanish rule for four centuries, creating a multi-ethnic society shaped by the displacement and assimilation of the indigenous peoples, the African slaves, and settlement from the Canary Islands and Andalusia. A census conducted in 1858 revealed that the Puerto Rican population at the time was 341,000 free people of color, which were mixed race, mulatos, and mestizos, 300,000 whites, and 41,000 slaves. On September 23, 1868, Ramón Emeterio Betances unleashed a revolt against Spanish rule, known as a Grito de Lares. The revolt was shut down by the Spanish, but the movements continued. In 1898, following the Spanish-American War, the U.S. acquired Puerto Rico under the terms of the Treaty of Paris, and Puerto Rico has since remained an unincorporated territorial possession, making it one of the oldest quote-unquote colonies in the Western Hemisphere. A reoccurring topic amongst the Puerto Rican people is whether they should become the 51st state. On June 21, 2018, Puerto Rico's non-voting member of Congress, Jennifer Gonzalez Colon, introduced the Puerto Rican Admission Act of 2018, also known as H.R. 6246, to Congress to admit Puerto Rico as a U.S. state. This would allow Puerto Rico to fully become a U.S. state by January 2020. Supporters of this bill say the legislation is only fair, considering Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens, although they don't have full American rights, such as voting for president. Congress, however, has shown very little interest in changing anything. Opponents, however, say that Puerto Rico would face higher taxes and that the cost of statehood would be devastating. During the 19th century, Puerto Rico received families from many areas, primarily from the Canary Islands and Andalusia, but also from France, Lebanon, China, Ireland, Scotland, Germany, Italy, and other Afro-Caribbean islands. A genetic study conducted in 2007 claimed that the average ethnic makeup of Puerto Ricans is 66% white, 18% black, and 16% Native American. Another study put them at 63% European, 21% Sub-Saharan African, and 15% American. It has also been revealed that between 52-84% to 84 of the population possess Amerindian mitochondrial DNA in their maternal ancestry. And now moving on to culture, Puerto Rican culture is a mix of European, mainly Spanish, Italian, French, German, and Irish cultures blended with African and Native American cultures. But they've also had a large influence of mainland American culture as well. The official symbols of Puerto Rico are the Renita Mora, which is a type of bird, the Flor de Maga, the Coqui, and the Jibaro, or Countryman. Music is also a big part of Puerto Rican culture and expression. Some of the most notable genres of music include salsa, which was popularized by Puerto Ricans in New York in the 60s and 70s, bomba, plena, aguinaldo, and reggaeton. Some notable Puerto Rican musicians and artists include Héctor Lavoe, Tito Puentes, Ricky Martin, Mark Anthony and J-Lo, and Don Omar and Daddy Yankee, just to name a few. When it comes to religion, the majority of Puerto Rico is Roman Catholic, although there are smaller Protestants and Jewish communities as well. Puerto Rican cuisine, or cocina criolla as some call it, is very similar to Cuban cuisine and some of the main dishes include arroz con guandules or rice and pigeon peas, mofongo, pasteles, pernil or pig roast, cassave, arroz con dulce, and dulce de leche. When it comes to sports, baseball is also the most popular sport, and some other popular sports include boxing, basketball, and volleyball. Puerto Ricans and Puerto Rican Americans are the second largest Latino group in the United States. The highest concentration of Puerto Ricans can be found in New York and Florida, followed by New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts.
Now last, but certainly not least, we are moving on to the Dominican Republic. DR is located on the island of Española, which it shares with the nation of Haiti, making it one of two Caribbean islands shared by two sovereign states. Prior to Columbus, the island of Española was inhabited by the native Taino people, who arrived to the island around 650 AD. The island was divided into five Taino chiefdoms. The Spanish arrived in 1492, and within a few years, their population declined drastically, same story as Puerto Rico and Cuba, mainly due to smallpox, measles, and other diseases contracted from the Spanish. Census records from 1514 reveal that 40% of the Spanish men in Santo Domingo were married to Taino women. Columbus named the island La Española, and Santo Domingo became the first permanent European settlement in the Americas. The first cathedral, hospital, university, and other landmarks of the New World can be found in Santo Domingo as well. Santo Domingo was the site of many firsts. Apart from being the first permanent settlement, it was also the first colony to import African slaves, with the first group coming in 1501. The first slave rebellion also happened on the Spanish side of the island. By 1750, the population was approximately 30,000 white landowners, 30,000 free and mixed people of color, and 15,000 black slaves. The Dominican Republic would experience many shifts in power before it finally became its own truly independent nation. In 1821, José Núñez de Cáceres would declare the colony's independence from the Spanish crown and named it Spanish Haiti. However, this newly independent republic only lasted for two months, as the entire island would come under Haitian rule under Jean-Pierre Boyer. This period of a unified island under Haitian rule lasted for 22 years. In 1838, Juan Pablo Duarte, who many referred to as El Padre de la Patria, would form a secret society called La Trinitaria, which sought the complete independence of Santo Domingo without any foreign intervention. Together with Francisco del Rosario Sanchez and Ramón Matías Meja, they are considered the three founding fathers of the Dominican Republic. On February 27, 1844, DR declared independence from Haiti. However, in 1861, Pedro Santana signed a pact with the Spanish crown, reverting the Dominican back to colonial status. After four years of conflict between Dominican nationalists and Spanish sympathizers, Spanish rule would once again come to an end in 1865, following the Restoration War, led in part by military general Gregorio Luperón. In the following decades, DR would face many hardships, elect many presidents, face U.S. intervention, and then, in 1930, rose to power one of the most well-known dictators of recent history, Rafael Trujillo. Trujillo would remain in power for 31 years, up until his assassination in 1961. His ruling has had an everlasting effect on Dominican society, with many honoring his legacy while others detest him. Trujillo led with an iron fist, and while the country progressed in terms of health care, education, transportation, and infrastructure, this era was also clouded by fear, massacres, resistance, and the deathly silencing of any opposition. Following Trujillo's death, a new president was elected, but in 1865, out of fear of another communist government arising, the U.S. sent troops into the DR and civil unrest followed. The U.S. eventually pulled out, and since then, DR has experienced a series of presidents and leaders, many corrupts, and the people are fed up. Now, on a more positive note, let's move on to the people of the Dominican Republic. The ethnic makeup of the DR is 73% mixed race, 16% white, 11% black, and 1% other. In 2012, genealogical testing determined that the average gene pool of the Dominican Republic is 58% European, 35% African, and 7% Native American. The Dominican Republic is also the Spanish-speaking Latin American country with the highest amounts of African ancestry in its gene pool. And now let's move on to Dominican culture. Due to cultural syncretism, Dominican culture has a European cultural basis influenced by both African and native Taino elements. Likewise to Cuba and Puerto Rico, music and dance is an important expression of Dominican culture. Musically, the Dominican Republic is most known for merengue and bachata, which are known globally. 
Dembo has also emerged as an urban style music popular among the Dominican youth. Balo is another genre of Dominican music which is African derived and many times played in religious ceremonies. Some well known Dominican artists include Fernandito Villalona, Johnny Ventura, Juan Luis Guerra, Anthony Santos, El Alfa, Nati Natasha, and we'll just go ahead and throw Cardi B in there too. When it comes to religion, the Dominican Republic is 57% Catholic, 23% Protestant, 18% unaffiliated, and 2% Muslim. When it comes to food, Dominican cuisine is very similar to that of Cuba and Puerto Rico. Plantain is a big staple in Dominican food, and dishes such as mangu and tostones are very popular, usually accompanied by a deep fried meat, typically salami and cheese. La bandera, meaning the flag, which is rice, meats, and beans, is the most popular lunch dish. Sancocho is a stew often made with variety of meats, and other popular foods include chicharrón, yuca, batata, cassave, habichuela con dulce, and dulce de leche. When it comes to sports, baseball is by far the most popular sport, surprise, surprise, and after the United States, DR has the second highest number of players in the MLB, which is the Major League Baseball. Other popular sports include basketball and boxing. Dominicans and Dominican Americans are the fifth largest Latino group in the United States. The highest concentration of Dominicans can be found in New York, followed by New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Florida. And that is it for this video, guys. I know it's kind of long, but I hope that I did uh, my Puerto Rican and Cuban people out there justice. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Please leave your feedback in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!